You're listening to the Astromommy Daily Horoscope, a forecast that hopes to shine a light in the dark, helping us all see where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Whether you're a first-time listener or a long-time subscriber, thanks for being here. I truly appreciate you being in the Astromommy community. I hope you enjoy today's horoscope and card reading. If you would like to support the Astromommy newsletter, there are several ways to do so. Subscribe on Substack, share it with a friend, schedule a reading, check out my family's Etsy shop, Metaphysical Flamingo, or just leave a tip. Without further ado, here is the Daily Horoscope. But did you die? Mercury opposite Pluto, square the moon, and Mars enters Virgo. Daily Horoscope for Monday and Tuesday, July 10th through the 11th, 2023. Good morning, friends. For this summer, I am offering a special Hellenistic astrology reading for donation only. My summer reading special is a quick 25 to 30 minute reading called the Hellenistic Five Point Reading, where we will go over your big three, your sun, moon, and rising sign complexes, and the two most notable transits that you are in or that are coming up for you this year using Hellenistic techniques. If you'd like to book a Hellenistic Five Points reading, please email me at astromommyastrology at gmail.com. Your reading can be via Zoom or over the phone. I have a few more spots available during the summer between now and mid-August 2023, so please reach out to me to book your consultation. Okay, let's get into the astrology. Today and tomorrow have some really intense astrology going on, hence the title of this horoscope, But Did You Die? Because it may feel like our limits are being tested right now, and to be honest, it's not letting up for a while. The rest of July has even more intense stuff coming up with the nodes shifting signs on July 17th, Venus is retrograde, and Mercury and the Sun moving into Leo at the same time, July 21st through the 22nd, and Pluto hitting the southern bending of the nodes exactly on July 28th. It's a lot, and it's testing our strength to hold the line within ourselves. By the end of this summer, we will all be wearing, but did you die, t-shirts like freaking medals of courage and valor. So today, Monday, by the time you are reading or listening to this, Mars will have already shifted into the sign of Virgo, and you may already be thinking about how to solve your current conundrum, whatever that may be. At 7.40 a.m. Eastern Time, Mars left the gregarious, courageous, and dramatic sign of Leo and entered the methodical, detail-oriented, perfectionistic sign of Virgo, which happens to be my natal placement. On a side note, this means I am having my Mars return. This happens about every one to two years for everyone, depending upon their natal Mars placement and the current retrograde cycle of Mars. The Mars return is an interesting one in that it can bring a lot of fast, action-oriented movement and energy, which can be great for getting things done, but it can also be a time of feeling impatient, more easily triggered, and frustrated. If you have Mars and Virgo like me, then you may have been feeling these types of sentiments brewing, especially frustration since Mars is now beginning his opposition to Saturn, which can bring a lot of limitations and restrictions to your normally robust Martian energy. We could feel thwarted, hindered, or suppressed when it comes to our drives, ambitions, and physical desires, unless they are for a spiritual higher purpose and serve to merge our reality with the divine. We will talk more about their opposition as it gets closer and closer to perfecting, which will happen on July 20th. But just know that we will already be feeling these things as the energy builds over the next 10 days. So Mars and Virgo likes routine, schedules, and organization. Mars and Virgo asks, what is the plan? What can I expect? And then he will happily execute that plan. But if it gets changed, thwarted, or delayed, or there is no regular interval to count on, Mars and Virgo can get pissy, indecisive, and obstinate. It's a very soldierly energy and needs a plan, a list, or an order to follow. Mars and Virgo is excellent at getting things done, achieving results, being studious, industrious, and being of service to the point of perfectionism that outranks most. It can solve problems, puzzles, and crack codes easily and efficiently because Mars and Virgo is smart, thinks quickly, and is able to see patterns where others can't see anything. Mars will be in Virgo until August 27th, 2023, when he will ingress into Libra. At 12.34 p.m. Eastern Time, the Moon in Aries forms a trine to Venus in Leo at 25 degrees. This is a harmonious transit that is fiery and can symbolize an emotional enthusiasm for all things Venusian, like love, romance, flowers, beauty, sexuality, and sensuality. We could feel in alignment with our values and the pleasurable things in life, or a renewed sense of enthusiasm, happiness, and inspiration. In the late afternoon on Monday, we have a dynamic T-square formation perfecting between Mercury and Cancer, Pluto and Capricorn, and the Moon and Aries. You can see this T-square configuration in the chart below. Mercury will perfect an opposition to Pluto and Capricorn at 4.47 p.m. Eastern Time. Then the Moon and Aries will square Pluto at 6.49 p.m., 
followed by her square to Mercury at 7.11 p.m. Eastern Time, forming the T-square. You can see Pluto in the bottom left opposing Mercury in the top right and the Moon in square to both in the bottom right of the chart. Mercury opposite Pluto at the last degrees of Cancer and Capricorn symbolize a standoff energy between a mental or an environmental extreme that is challenging our survival instincts. It's a huge test of our mental health as we are coming face to face with our anxieties, fears, paranoias, and phobias of the mind. With Mercury and Cancer, we are trying to figure out how to mentally feel comfortable, safe, and secure, especially within our familial and romantic relationship dynamics. And this is being opposed by deep feelings about our goals goals, commitments, and the structures we depend on in our lives. We are being asked to look at something head on and make a decision, compromise, or pivot. It's fast moving energy as Mercury will only be at this point until 12, 11 a.m. on Tuesday or late Monday night. And then he will ingress into Leo where he will be feeling a lot more confident depending on the choices he made and he will be able to speak with greater authority and conviction. This is interesting too because over the weekend, Mercury formed a trine to Neptune representing a harmonious flow of emotions, conversations, and feeling in tune with the environment and having good times to today coming to terms with the deeper emotions, thoughts, and interactions that may have prompted this sort of now or never or do or die type of energy. As I said, a choice will need to be made that hopefully will move things forward in a positive direction in our lives. The moon joining in on this energy by squaring both Mercury and Pluto is making this an even more sensitive and personal situation. The moon in Aries knows what she wants and she's ready to fight, compete, or take action toward those things. So we could see people charging forth, pioneering, and or literally running toward their goals. The only caution here is to not go too quickly or hastily into things that you may regret later. So remember to think before you speak, act, or drive anywhere. This energy is a catalyst for change in our hearts, minds, and environments. People will be forced to make a decision, a choice, or take a stance. This T-square is between cardinal signs, and the cardinal signs start, initiate, and begin things. So today and tomorrow, we could see concrete events happening in our lives that literally launch things forward. This could feel really exciting and scary at the same time. As always with the moon square Mercury, we need to be aware that there could be fights, drama, or intense conversations that are meant to push, prod, and propel things into action. These are the types of conversations that are like starting the engines of the plane. It's a declaration of going somewhere, and the act enables the plane to take off. In the evening on Monday at 7.55 p.m. Eastern Time, the moon ingresses into the sign of her exaltation, Taurus, and within 30 minutes forms a trine to Mars, now in Virgo, remember? And then at 9.22 p.m. Eastern Time, she conjoins the North Node in Taurus. The moon loves being in Taurus. She feels supported, fertile, and abundant there. She is able to make things grow and thrive and be nurtured. When the moon is in Taurus, we could feel more connected to our senses and desire the simple pleasures in life, the creature comforts like good food, company, rest, and exercise. The moon in a trine to Mars and the earth signs Taurus and Virgo could mean that physically we feel good, in alignment, and at ease. Things could have been difficult today, but by the end of the day, we feel we are in the right place at the right time and doing the right things. When the moon conjoins the north node, we may experience a heightened sense of belonging and appreciation for things we have in life that are good, solid, and of value. Maybe we feel we made the right decision and we are pleased with the results and feel successful. On Tuesday at 12, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, so late Monday night on the West Coast, Mercury ingresses into the sign of Leo. Mercury in Leo is loud, dramatic, and sometimes obnoxious. It's roaring lion energy, so it's the type of communication that is impossible to ignore because it's in your face, in the spotlight, and on stage, hopefully making you laugh. Mercury in Leo can be boastful, braggadocious, theatrical, and did I mention loud? Mercury will be in Leo until July 28th, 2023, when he will ingress into Virgo. So for the next 17 days, we can expect loud, exuberant conversations, news reports, and messages. People could be unapologetically shouting their feelings, needs, and wants from the rooftops, making sure that you know how they feel. This is fast energy as Mercury is moving over two degrees per day, so we could see the circumstances and environments of our lives changing very quickly. It's like whatever decision you made when Mercury opposed Pluto on Monday, now over over the next 17 days, you are implementing this decision in a very Leo-like, loud, and proud manner. It won't be subtle. Did I mention the loudness?
At 8.11 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, the moon in Taurus forms a sextile to Saturn in Pisces, and this is an aspect that represents feeling supported by a structure, foundation, or a pearl of internal wisdom that is helping to provide opportunities for nurturance, abundance, and possible growth. It could symbolize having pleasant interactions with a father figure or a person in authority, making plans for commitment, greater responsibility, or feeling successful at something you've been working really hard for. By 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Mercury in Leo squares the north and south nodes at 0 degrees 48 minutes of Taurus and Scorpio, with Mercury at the northern bending, indicating that a concrete event will occur on this day that moves things forward in our lives. This could be communication, messages, or a way of thinking that changes things up, making us feel like we are the stars of the show in some way. We may be looking at the past in a new light and thus feel inspired and enthusiastic about the future. It represents a grand mental shift from possibly feeling victimized to feeling empowered and worthy of this new reality. At 3.14 p.m. Eastern Time, Mars and Virgo forms a trine to the North Node and a sextile to the South Node, indicating another confirmation that you are on the right road and all the lights are green. You can freely move ahead and it feels right to do so. The Moon in Taurus perfects her conjunction to Jupiter in Taurus at 4.03 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, again indicating being in the right place at the right time and abundance, hope, joy, and blessings coming into your life. It feels good, pleasurable, and fertile. Jupiter and the moon together bring more peace to our relationships, more prosperity, and opportunities for growth, and we are able to tune into all the great things we have in our lives, feeling immense gratitude for them. We've lived another day on this beautiful planet. The last transit of Tuesday is a semi-square from the moon in Taurus to Neptune in Pisces, symbolizing a need to relax and listen to our intuition as we move ahead with all of these new adventures. There could be an internal restlessness with this transit like you are not sure if you can trust all the good fortune coming your way. The key is to surrender to the positive vibes and let your feelings of anxiety, paranoia, and distrust go. It may be old baggage or old programs trying to come in and cause doubts. Just bless the feelings and let them go. They have no more power over you because did you die? Nope, you're still here reading or listening to the horoscope and handling all these transits like a champ. You got this. Let's move on to the card for the day. What is the guidance for today? Seven, the chariot reversed. On this card, we see the charioteer riding in his chariot being drawn by a pair of black and white sphinxes. In this depiction, the charioteer appears to be in motion, unlike the traditional tarot where he is ready to go somewhere but hasn't started moving yet. In this artwork, his hair is being blown and he is holding his body in a way that looks like he is moving forward, indicating imminent change. The chariot upright usually represents feeling motivated to do something, having control, and contemplating where you want to go. There could also be feelings of conquest, success, determination, and victory, and outward change is coming. In the reverse position, the chariot can symbolize feeling out of control, having self-doubt, or indecisiveness about where to go. It could also represent feelings of defeat, failure, opposition, or the need for self-discipline. It is symbolic of an inward change that may be coming. As the card for the day, I feel that this could symbolize many things. First, something in your life may need to be reevaluated. Maybe it is not going according to your plan or you have been trying to control it too much. You may need to take a different approach, change course, and relax your grip a little bit to allow free movement. Second, a project or goal that you set out to accomplish has become challenging and hard, and the chariot reversed is an indication that your dedication is being tested. Can you hold the line when things get tough and still accomplish your goals? It's an invitation to take a moment and check in on what is most important to you with this specific goal in mind, and then take the necessary steps to persevere to the finish line. And thirdly, the chariot reversed may also signify the need to focus your attention and energy on your own self-discipline and mental processes before taking physical strides forward toward your destination. By doing the inner work first, you will be ready to literally show up physically. This is an important part of the process. We may need a guide to help us do this, someone who has mastered the art of self-discipline and can show us the way. There's no shame in having a guide, teacher, or trusted friend as a mentor. It may even be really helpful to have someone else lead for a while as you practice mastering your energy. Let me know if this reading resonates with you in the comments. I hope this is helpful. Until Wednesday, Astro Mummy. Thank you for reading or listening to the Daily Horoscope. Quick links and resources can be found at the bottom of the newsletter. Today's card was pulled from the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot, available on Amazon.
If you seek knowledge and enlightenment, the Astronomy News Center may be right for you. Side effects of reading or listening to the Astronomy News Center are common and include joy, jubilation, delight, happiness, gratitude, love, triumph, feeling in tune with the universe, experiencing deep insights, reflections, and contemplations, a lightened soul, a lighter step, feeling awake when others are asleep, illuminated, enlightened, having spiritual experiences, noticing repeating numbers, animals in nature, or songs on the radio that speak to you, getting vibes, clairvoyance, clairaudience, and clairsmellions, Feeling like you know secret language, biophilia, crying tears of joy, emotional literacy, feeling lively, stable, exalted, having an auric glow, or feeling like you woke up on the right side of the bed have all been reported. If you purchase anything through the affiliate links that I provide in the newsletters, it will make a very small commission. Thanks for listening.